1978, BMW's motorsport division produced its first car and called it, rather predictably, the M1. With no less than two propeller badges on the back, the car was in fact only half German. Lamborghini, at the time the leaders in mid-engine supercar design, helped to develop the underpinnings, while the dramatic wedge shape was penned by Gijaro. The 3.5-litre engine beneath the rear engine cover was undeniably German, however. With only six cylinders, the M1 left traditional supercar buyers feeling a bit short-changed. But with fuel injection and four valves per cylinder, there was no shortage of power. Sadly, the car never reached its full potential on the racetrack. Changes to Group 5 regulations meant the M1 was outlawed before it had been homologated. And the Pro Car Series of 1979 and 1980 was one of its few outings. It had been a tough lesson, but one that BMW took to heart when it came to building their next M car. is the original? Yeah, this is the original uh, German touring car, the M3, with the S14 motor. It was quite a lot different to what you're used to in South Africa, having the E30 325 IS shadow line. Yeah. They never, they never brought these into South Africa? No, no. Uh, this was, there were special imports, there were about three in South Africa. And the main differences on this one to the uh, shadow line is the flarings you have on the fenders and in the uh, boot spoiler and the squarish look at the back and obviously the M3 badge. Yeah, I just noticed straight away left and right. So, I mean, you realize this is the original real deal, but I suppose this set the benchmark for where M has gone as a brand because when this came out in, in 87, I mean, this really was to get M into racing and they obliterated everyone in the world. What is it like to drive though? Because there's no traction control, no stability. This is original driving. Well, you drive this out the way you're supposed to drive a car. There's no assistance. And uh, my best way of describing it is like driving in a go-kart. It sticks to the road and you're driving it. It's your ability which is making a drive. You drive it often? Not very often. I'm scared to take it out on the roads. Yeah. Normally very early on a Sunday morning when there's not much traffic. How about early in the morning on, on a, a racetrack where there's no traffic at all, except a couple of its BMW brothers? That might be very enjoyable. I think it's going to be great. Let's go for a drive. In contrast to its glamorous ancestor, the seemingly humdrum M3 won almost everything it could enter. From touring car championships in Germany, Britain and Australia to 24-hour endurance races at Spa and the Nürburgring. Even now, more than 20 years later, the E30 M3 still feels at home on the racetrack, its engine easily revving to 8,000 RPM and beyond. Now, we all know BMW stands for performance motoring, sporty cars with dynamic handling and of course the unpredictability of that rear wheel drive. But it just wouldn't be BMW without the kick in the nuts cars, or otherwise known as the M cars. In the 1 Series range, drop top or hard top, the 135 has been king of the pile until now. Petrol heads, meet the 1M Coupe. Now a lot of you might be wondering, the car's been on the market for a month now, is this really a thoroughbred M? Or have BMW just taken a 1 Series, put on some styling body kits and slapped on that M badge? There's only one way to find out. Is the 1M Coupe significantly better than a 135? Well we've come to the track, mid Race racetrack, to put that to the test. One thing the 1M is not is subtle. Even in white, it's as far removed from its lesser 1 Series siblings as a high jump athlete is from a heavyweight boxer. The 1M is sure to get some stiff competition from Audi's soon to be launched RS3, but first it will need to see off the challenge from within the BMW stable. With 225 kilowatts and 400 newton meters on tap, the 135i has earned itself a reputation as something of a handful. Around the track, this seems to be misplaced, as the car handles everything you throw at it with benign ease. 
Switch off the traction control, especially in the wet, and you'd be looking for trouble. But even in convertible guise and with automatic transmission, the 135 is a lot of fun. Which means the 1M Coupe will have to be a whole lot better. Well, I'll tell you what, you get into this after going for a little spin in that original M3, dimension and size wise there's not much to choose from between the two cars but what is going to stand out is literally just the level of refinement it's actually insane in a way sad though because you really lose that raw feel of driving the car that you get when you're sitting in that m3 but this 1m coupe is is really unbelievable i've been driving the 135 now and the thing you're going to notice first is what i'm going to do right now back of the straight here you can literally jump on the brakes the brakes are phenomenal and that is truly M spec. I mean the brakes, different size discs, uh, cross drilled as well. So your braking power compared to a 135 is significant. Under the skin, the 1 Series M shares a lot of DNA in common with the M3. I mean from the competition chassis, the suspension, but brakes, transmission. It's got a completely reworked exhaust. It's got a new air intake manifold. And of course all of this translates into a ridiculously quick car. The other thing, you're not fighting for grip all the time because they've also gone huge in terms of the track. 154 front and rear, whereas if you look at the 135s, you've got a 10 track at the back. So you're going to find this car is just ferocious in terms of its grip. It's got 265s at the back as well, so it's never ever going to give up, which is literally amazing. Very easy to unsettle it actually when you have everything off, traction control, Alice is off. Very easy to unsettle it, it'll start bobbing and weaving like a boxer, so you've still got to be careful. Because you think the back's going to want to break, but it actually, it's, uh, it's inspiring. You feel the back going before it does, and it gives you plenty of time just to lift off and, uh, and control that slide. It really is a sweet, sweet car. Until now, the 135 was certainly the benchmark in the 1 Series range, but this 1 Series M Coupe just takes it up a notch higher. This is not just some reskinned one series. They haven't just gone and put a sport body kit on. This is built from the ground up to be an M. An M means immense power, immense braking, immense handling, immense fun. Okay, final analysis. Is this significantly better than 135? Is it priced right, 80 grand or so odd over the uh, 135 version? What do you think? Simple, yes, 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 hell yes. So why then, do you ask, didn't BMW just call it the M1? Well, possibly because of this car, the M1 homage concept of 2008. There are no production plans as yet, but if they do decide to build it, you can be sure that BMW will get it just as right as they did 30 years ago.